Welcome. Welcome to Disney's most expensive resort. This is where Minnie Mouse gets her Gucci. This is where Mickey charges his Tesla Cybertruck. <laughs> and this is where I'm staying for the next 24 hours. <laughs> Today I'm gonna to be staying at the Grand Floridian Disney Resort. Now, if you haven't heard of this resort, basically it is the most expensive resort. I Googled it. You might be wondering, Timmy, how much did you pay for one night at this resort? Well, sir, I got the cheapest room. Mickey, get your car. Anyways, the cheapest room for one night on a weeknight with taxes was $900. Now, luckily I am an annual pass member. I'm not trying to flex, but I am. And so I did get a discount, but the room is still worth almost $1,000. Now, of course, I am gonna be eating at this resort for lunch, dinner, and breakfast. I'm gonna be reviewing all the food that I possibly can. And so that is gonna add into the cost as well. So the whole day is gonna be worth around $1,000. Can we believe that? Mickey. I mean, I did choose to spend this money, so I'm doing this to myself, okay? And I'm doing it for you so that we can explore the most expensive Disney resort together and have a moment. <laughs> hey, friends. Are you kidding me? I don't understand, did the clock strike 12? Is that Cinderella's alarm? We are also gonna explore the amenities, the stores, the whole premises. It is gonna be a big fun-filled day. Do I have anything else I have to say? Oh yes, okay, so I'm gonna be eating room service for dinner and breakfast. They don't serve room service during lunch hours. There's a lot of construction going on, it's fine. They don't serve room service during lunch hours and so for lunch, I'm gonna eat at one of the many restaurants, probably the cheapest one, <laughs> just because I am gonna splurge for dinner and breakfast because it's room service and you have to splurge. So let's go check out the room and then we will go and get lunch. I'm so hungry. But first, give this video a big thumbs up if you're enjoying it. It's the easiest way to support little old me. When a video is this expensive, <laughs> all the support really does help, girlies. Also, if you're new here, subscribe. I make food content, fast food, restaurant food and hotel food. It's a great time. Okay, come on. So as you can see, this is the Grand Floridian girlies. What do we think? There is some construction happening at the top, but that's okay. The Disney magic illusion might be broken, but <laughs> we'll get through it. This resort does seem to be pretty massive. This is just like one of the buildings. And then we have the main one right here. And I think that there's like a lot more buildings because I'm in building five. This is like the little check-in area. Very cute. Here we have these fancy luggage things from the sweet life of Zach and Cody. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I also just like wanted to say that I'm so grateful to even be here and I'm only able to make these types of videos because of you guys watching. So thank you so much. Even if I'm in like the cheapest room, I don't care. I'll be in the closet. Well, been there, done that. But this is a gift. Okay, here we go. Sliding doors. Ooh, ooh, very haunted mansion. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Look casual to me. Oh my God. Oh my God. What in the beauty and the beast ballroom is this? Oh my gosh. Someone dance with me. <laughs> what in the world? Like, I feel like I'm on the Titanic in like the rich person section, you know? Look at this elevator. It's like giving old fashioned, ancient, but like class, right? Even the staircase is like eating. Like I could walk down these stairs in a huge ball gown and I would just blend in. Even the curtains are like very Anne of Green Gables. I don't think I've ever been in a more stunning hotel lobby. I don't even know how to process it. It's just, it's insane. There's even a piano. There is a horse. Everyone's just in here walking around casually and they're not shook by their environments. How is this normal to some people? Okay. To Focus, we have to find the room. We can explore the whole premises after lunch. Wait, quickly, look at this staircase. It looks like a prop staircase. Like it doesn't look like you can actually use it. You know what I mean? It looks so grand. Anyways, <laughs> let's find my room. This is like the center area between all the different buildings. Building five is apparently the last building on the left, which sounds like a horror movie. I think we're getting closer. This is Sugar Loaf. <laughs> building six. Even though I am extremely grateful to be here, I am expecting pillow mints just because of the price. Like I'm, I'm expecting a Mickey shaped mint and a robe and some slippers. Ooh. Oh, hold on. There's a map. Here it is. Say go K. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. K. Here it is guys. Say go K. It smells so good in here. Look at 
Look at these gorgeous hallways and that gorgeous stain. Here it is, guys. I'm scared. I'm nervous. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god, the cupboard. Oh, it's closing by itself. Okay, girl. You do what you want. You're independent. Guys, this is gorgeous. Oh my god. I'm sweating. Not not from heat, but from luxury. Okay, so it says <laughs> Welcome, Albert's family. Thank you. My wife is gonna love that little detail. Can we just talk about this little chandelier? It's bird light bulbs. There's a chicken, there's a pigeon. Does it work? Yes! Wait, oh, never mind. The birds don't light up. It's still gorgeous. Anyways. Oh my god, Mary Poppins! It's a lovely the holiday with Mary. We have a gorgeous patio window with these little hula hoops. We can open them. Look how cute. We have some chairs with a little table. This couch is simple, but very pretty. And then we have this gorgeous little table. It looks very nice. Oh, it's heavy. That means it's nice for sure. And then we got some gorgeous Mary Poppins themed watercolor paintings on Cherry Tree Lane. Is this not the perfect little mukbang table for me? We have this little fancy chair. That's adorable. There's this gorgeous, luxurious looking rug. We have two beds with these gorgeous headboards. I love it when a headboard is like kind of plush. It just really makes you feel like you are living the life, you know? And then these are little lights, I think. Yeah, little reading lights if you like to read literature. We have a cute little nightstand, a phone. Oh, wait, this is the room service QR code. Breakfast and dinner. Dinner is served from 5 p.m. to 11. Love that. Okay, these turn on those in the ceiling. Oh, and that and those. Okay, very nice. It's lit. We have another painting. I don't think this is Mary Poppins themed. I mean, oh, it is. This is this is Mary Poppins Returns. You mean to tell me that I'm sharing a room with a smudged version of Lin-Manuel Miranda and Emily Blunt? And we have a nice fancy thermostat. I'm gonna keep it at the lowest possible, which I guess is 68. Okay. Let me check these drawers for any Last of Us mold. Clean, gorgeous. Okay, Pedro Pascal, we don't need you today. Thank you. We have a trash can, a coffee machine. Now what's in here? Nothing. Endless possibilities. You can put anything in here. Okay, and then we have a fridge, one of those fancy fridges with the clear door. It always makes me feel very nice. It looks very clean, up to Disney's magical standards. And then we have a big closet, I think. Ooh, wait. We have extra towels, a safe, a steamer. Okay, Stanley. And a blow dryer. Very nice. Do we have a robe, please? No? That's okay. <laughs> At least we have an extra pillow blanket. <laughs> it is time to venture into the bathroom. Ooh, okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, hello. Is that real gold? Probably not. This is so nice. We have a handle here, another handle. We have a handheld sprayer thingy and a gorgeous shower head. And I love that this is accessible for everyone. They have railings, a seat. This is fantastic. Can we just talk about this light up mirror and the man in it? We also have a little makeup mirror. Bath soap, mouthwash, vanity kit, body lotion, shower cap, Kleenex, a toilet, and another painting. Do you spot Mary? I don't see her. I know that this room is worth almost a thousand dollars and that's extremely overpriced, but I am so grateful that it's gorgeous and it's clean and it feels luxurious. It actually really does. So far, so good, but we haven't even tried the food yet. That's right, it's time for lunch. <laughs> We're gonna go to the Gasparilla Island Grill, which is their quick service restaurant. The meals are like under 20 bucks. I'm excited to see what the cheap food at the most expensive resort is like. Welcome to the island of Gasparilla where all of your saving money dreams may actually come true. This is the inside of the restaurant, very cute. It like didn't feel like cheap dining at all. It still felt very nice. And they also had like a little market with like ice creams and little snacks. And look at these massive sandwiches, guys. These are sandwiches for men, manwiches. Not sponsored by Manwich, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they also had tons of desserts and it was like a self-serve type of situation. I got two of them. You'll see which ones I got in a second. This is the full menu as you can see they have sandwiches, bowls, an artisan burger, a Cuban sandwich. As you guys know, I am half Cuban, so that is half of me right there. They also had some mac and cheese, an impossible burger, a grilled cheese, some flatbreads, but I chose the blackened chicken sandwich because I like flavor. And that sounds flavorful, does it not? I also got the house made mac and cheese because as a Giada de Laurentiis stan, if I see pasta, I eat it. This is how the mac and cheese looked. <laughs> not very pretty and not very bright, but it might taste good. We'll see. Here are the fries, they look nice and Crispy, buttery, flaky. And there's the chicken sandwich. It looks messy, but beautiful. It's a beautiful disaster, just like Kelly Clarkson's song. And these are the desserts that I chose. I didn't know what they were when I got them, but we are about to find out what they are together. Let's, Let's feast. feast! Let's feast. 
I'm so hungry. Let's first try the house-made mac and cheese. Now, it doesn't have the most homemade look to it, but it might taste homemade. We'll see. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Can you tell I'm hungry? Okay. This mac and queso might be house made. It doesn't taste house made, but it's still delicious. <laughs> it reminds me of a more processed mac and cheese, like possibly KFC mac and cheese, Popeye's mac and cheese. Those do have a processed flavor, but they still taste delicious. And that's what's happening here. The sauce is so creamy, but like it was made in a factory by a machine creamy, you know? There's a nice tang, a nice sharpness that is reminiscent of KFC mac and cheese, but just a little less loud. So I'm enjoying it for what it is. I'm gonna give the Grand Floridian's cheaper mac and cheese a nice seven out of 10. Yes, now let's try the fries. These are shoestring fries, but they still have the skins on them. So you still get those vitamins. Crispy. Cute. Fun. <laughs> Look good. And with ketchup, ooh, mmm, mm -hmm. this ketchup is different. Is this like Disney ketchup? It has some magic in it. Tinkerbell was tired of squeezing tomatoes, so she was like, Poof, and she put some pixie dust in there. <gasps> it spilled on me. These are good fries, but much like the mac and cheese, they do have a mediocre flavor. Now I know I'm gonna get comments saying, Timmy, you can't eat at the cheapest place and expect excellence. I'm not expecting that. So far, I am satisfied with the mediocrity. The fries are extremely crispy and they do taste fresh. Um, they just don't taste special, if that makes sense. They just taste like any old shoestring potato. Ow, I put my look. Now it's Tinkerbell, she was like, I'm taking my magic back. You're gonna bite your lip. Basically, the fries get the job done, so I'm happy with them. I'm gonna give them the same, seven out of 10. They're good. Now it's time for the main star, the black and chicken sandwich. Now, this piece of chicken feels extremely heavy and it looks very well seasoned. Look at that. It has coleslaw cheese. I am ready. Oh my God. Mm. Mm. Now that's fierce. That was the flavor that I was looking for this whole meal. I am shocked that a sandwich that good was at the cheapest place. That did not happen. You did not see that, that was a ghost. I'm shocked that this sandwich is from the cheapest place on the resort premises. It tastes like it could literally come from the classiest menu. The chicken is such high quality, first of all. It's cooked perfectly, extremely juicy. The blackened flavor is so strong. You can taste all those spices. And then the coleslaw is extremely crunchy. It's tangy. Um, I think it has some celery in it, which is kind of different, but it kind of worked here. And the cheese added some richness. The bun, the bun. is a, for sure a brioche. It's a brioche. It is extremely buttery, kind of sweet. It's perfect, it's a 10 out of 10. Incredible. Mm. Now it's time to try the desserts. Now I have no clue what either of these are because they weren't labeled. This one seems to be like possibly a coconut pie. I see some shaved coconut there, some whipped cream, some crust. crust. Ooh, the texture. Can you see this? Barely, sorry. It has an extremely creamy filling. <gasps> oh my God. Oh, wow. Okay, let me pause on that. That is genuine perfection. The filling really does just taste sort of like a custard or, or vanilla pudding or creme brulee type of thing. You know, it is so creamy, it's not too sweet. A decadent, almost angelic texture. The coconut flakes add a little hint of something, something. And then the crust tastes like shortbread and I love shortbread cookies. It's just a very refreshing, decadent dessert. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Let me save that for later, put it in my little fridge. Last but not least, let's try whatever this chocolate dessert is. Oh my gosh, whoa! Oh my gosh! That's what the inside looks like. I did not expect that at all. Mmm, that's cheesecake. <gasps> I think Tinkerbell gave me my magic back. Wow. Oh my goodness. This is one of the most delicious things I've ever had in my lifetime. <laughs> Dreams do come true. The filling is like cheesecake mousse. It tastes just like cheesecake, but it's lighter and fluffier. 
and it's not so heavy, you know? The cheesecake mousse itself has a almond extract flavor. So it kind of tastes like a maraschino cherry. I love that so much. It just really made it pop and just really made it unique. And then the coating is like a nice thin layer of dark chocolate. Okay, so at this moment, I think I saw one of you guys. There was this girl that like passed by my table and she looked absolutely shooketh. She was staring at me. <laughs> I was expecting her to like come up and like say hi, but she never did. And I couldn't say hi to her because it would just be weird if I was like, <laughs> Do you watch me? <laughs> Do you want a picture? Like that's so cringe. So I just wanted to say that if any of you ever see me in a person, you can totally say hi. Even if I'm super awkward, it always makes my day. Um, and then the coating is like a nice thin layer of dark chocolate and it's not too sweet. It's just the perfect balance. Anyways, lunch was mainly incredible. Everything absolutely slayed me besides the sides. They were just kind of mediocre, but they were still good. So I definitely approve of this place. What was it called? Waterfall something. Hi, this is Editing Timmy. It's called Gasparilla Island Grill. Filming Timmy is so clueless. Anyways, guys, it is time to explore the whole resort premises. Okay, so there are boats that I think you can rent, which I'm not going to because even though I'm an alpha male, I have never learned how to drive a boat. There's Space Mountain. There's Cinderella's castle. I can smell her shoe from here. This is like such a peaceful resort, guys. It's very chill. Like it feels classy, but not like you have to, you know, impress on everybody. Like you can just be yourself, but it's still classy. Now the main pool is right behind me. I can't really film it though because there's tons of people there. But from what I could see, it looked very nice, very big. Wait a second, there's another pool. And it seems to have like a mountain on it. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. I can film the mountain part of it probably. So that is the mountain that I'm talking about. It's like a little waterfall moment. This architecture is so unique. I don't know if it's like Parisian or something. I don't know architectures. All I know is that it's pretty. <laughs> That's my review. It's pretty. There's also this like beach area on the lake. Now you can't actually go into the lake water because it's probably dirty or something, but it's gorgeous. Look at these beautiful white sands. And once again, there's a massive chessboard. A lot of these resorts have massive chessboards. I don't know if they're trying to appeal to the giant like troll demographic. What is this, Ella Enchanted? But I love it. It's iconic at this point. There's people boating. Yes, bro. And that I think is the Polynesian resort, which I have not reviewed yet, but they have like villas is literally on the water, which is, <laughs> those are probably very pricey girly. I'm gonna probably stay at the cheapest room there, at least for now. <laughs> we all know those girlies who think that they're funny just because they know how to do this face. Oh my God, guys, a Donald Duck meet and greet, exclusive for me, quack, come here. Donnie. Here are some of the more ritzy, fancy restaurants, 1900 Park Fair, and this one is called, I can't read it, Grand Floridian Cafe. They both look very bougie. Maybe I will go sit on one of those golden chairs in the future and do a mukbang in there. This is the 1900 Park Fair menu, and guys, they have Tiana's gumbo. I love Princess and the Frog so much and the fact that they have her gumbo, have to try that one day. As long as there's no frogs in it, girly. <laughs> this is a market type of shot called Sandy Grove. What's that say? Gifts and sundries. What's a sundry? Like a sun-dried tomato? They have all the essentials that you could ever need. Like Doritos, Cheetos, Fritos. And guys, they have DiGiorno, okay? It's not delivery. It's the Grand Floridian's Sundry's Frozen DiGiorno Pizza. That's what that is. They also have some stuff for the home, some little knickknacks and some cute little vacation shorts and things like that. And then this is another clothing store. This one's called Curious Clothers. It's such a cute name. I feel like everyone's aunt or uncle would shop at this store. You know what I mean? It's very that. And that's a good thing, you know? They also had some Pandora selections, very nice. And then they had a, a little sunglasses area. Anyways, now it's time to test out the ancient elevator. Look at this, guys. Ooh, the flower petal chandelier. Oh, oh my God. I feel like Rose when she can't find the key, remember that? Even the floor is pretty. Let's walk up the fancy staircase. I just want to experience this. Truly a magical moment, most pleasing to my career. Anyways, I started running up the stairs. <laughs> I think I went too fast. People were staring at me. I found another store that I can't pronounce 
and it basically had all of your typical Disney merch. Now, this is where I thrive. You guys know I'm a Disney stan. I love Disney merch. And I've actually gotten back into collecting limited edition Disney dolls. Not these ones. These ones are like adorable, but they're not like the limited edition ones. I used to collect limited dolls and I stopped for a couple years, but now I'm back into it. The Disney bug bit me again. The rat attacked me <laughs> and I'm back. Now, this store is called Basin and it's basically like a Lush or like a Bath and Body Works, but like a lot bougie. Now, is it just me or do these soaps look delicious? Of course, don't eat soap, but like visually, they look like giant macaroons. Like it's making me hungry. They also had to make your own candle area if you're a DIY girly. And they also had these like weird like jars of clay soap next to some sinks. Now, this is the Bipti. <laughs> Bipti. <laughs> This is the bit a a boutique, which is basically a place where like you can get like a princess makeover, I think, but it was closed. They have a Ferris wheel from 1902. Fun fact, Mickey himself wrote this. Was that a Tootsie Roll? I don't even know. Here's some more of the super fancy restaurants. We have Cidricos and Victoria Alberte. I guess they're both in here and they're closed. I don't know. Let's see the menu. Ooh, a sustainable fish, probably made out of paper straws. So this is called the Enchanted Rose. And I think that it's a lounge, which is interesting. It's a pretty sign. Very nice. Oh, there are those fake? Is that a painting? No, I think it's a window. Wow. Guys, <laughs> I thought a window was a painting. You can't take me anywhere. I'm so crazy. Let's walk down some more fancy stairs. Ooh, in my sketchers. So like the second floor is basically like a little shopping mall. They have lounges, tons of shops. It's gorgeous. I love that. This is another lounge called the Garden View Lounge. It's closed, but it's gorgeous. I don't know what this is, but it's giving house slash bingo. So this is the monorail station. You can see there's like security there and you can just go on the monorail to Magic Kingdom. That's another perk if you want to spend a thousand dollars, you know? I'm going to say though that the cheaper Disney resorts are genuinely worth staying at. Even if they're like a little pricier than like a normal hotel, having buses and like other forms of transportation going to and from the parks all day long makes your Disney vacation a thousand times better. Not sponsored, by the way. I wish it was. Come on, Mickey. Guys, I never thought I would get the chance to meet the cast of The Lion King. Mufasa? Simba? Who is she? Does she even go here? Look at all this gorgeousness. Look at this. Stunning! Stunning! Pick me up, sir. <laughs> Last stop is the spa and the gym. They're like at the very end of the whole resort. Luckily, there's this shaded walkway so that you can get there without sizzling like bacon. So I'm pretty sure this is the fitness center and spa, I think. Oh, here, fitness center. I have to use my key to get in. Okay, so I can't go in. <laughs> oh, there's the monorail. Hey, you apparently need your magic band or a physical like room key to enter. I tried to use my phone, which is what I've been using as my room key, like the Disney app, and it doesn't work. It's fine. I wasn't going to work out anyways. <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys the amenity, but just Google it, you know? Anyways, this resort is absolutely amazingly stunning. I am so impressed with it. If it was cheaper, I would stay here often, but this is a one-time thing for me. <laughs> Oh, hey, again. They came back already. I'm going to go back to the room, relax for a bit, and then in a couple hours, we are going to order dinner room service. I can't wait to see what they have. It is time to order room service dinner. So let's scan. It opened up the Walt Disney World website, and it says private dining at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. That's how it's pronounced. Appetizers. They have seasonal soup, shrimp cocktail, Caesar salad, plant-based crab cakes, and heirloom apple salad. Where's the mozzarella sticks? <laughs> Fancy people don't eat mozzarella sticks. They eat fried gruyere. Out of all these appetizers, the Caesar salad sounds the best to me. I don't really like shrimp. I don't want fake crab, and I don't feel like eating an heirloom apple salad. That salad has been passed down through generations. As for entrees, they have a burger, miso glazed salmon, buttermilk fried chicken, oh my god, with loaded smashed potatoes, and warmed bacon vinaigrette. Vinaigrette made of pig? That sounds iconic. They also have a New York steak, vegetable curry, pomodoro pasta. We are doing the buttermilk fried chicken with smashed potatoes. That sounds amazing. And as for dessert, they have a cookies and cream chocolate layer cake, strawberry lychee mousse, a key lime bar, 
and seasonal fruit cobbler. I'm gonna do the strawberry mousse. That sounds very nice and decadent. So the mousse is $12. The fried chicken meal is 31 and the Caesar salad is 16. So without tip and everything, it's gonna be a little under $60. That's a typical room service price, I feel. I'm gonna go call an order and I will see you guys when the food gets here. Welcome, Welcome to my, to my feast. feast. So, the Grand Floridian truly serves the whole room service experience. I have been to one too many hotels recently that serve room service in a paper bag. But here in the Grand Floridian, a nice man arrived in a full tuxedo <laughs> with the little rolling table. He was like, may I enter the room? And I was like, of course, sire. And he took this tray and he, he was like, can I place this on the table? And I was like, of course. This top plate is the fried chicken because that's what he told me. And I can see some fried chicken breading poking out of this. Do you see it? Kinda. Ooh, it's hot. We also have my little Caesar salad. Very cute. We have, I think a roll. Is this a roll? Oh, it's two rolls. Rolls wrapped in a cloth are just somehow more delicious. Am I right? And we have a nice little ball of butter here. We have the adorable little salt and pepper shakers. Love these. Okay, so I think that the dessert is underneath. So I'm just gonna set this aside and we'll open it after we enjoy our entree. So let's bring the fried chicken back. Come on, gobbler. Let's, let's reveal it. Oh! <gasps> oh! Look at this gorgeous chunk of fried chicken. I can't tell if it's boneless or if it's like a chicken filet. It looks amazing. I see some spinach underneath, the smashed loaded potato, and then the bacon vinaigrette. Oh my goodness. Here's the rolls up close, the salad, the butter. Let's first try the Caesar salad. It is pre-mixed with the dressing. We love that. Less work for us. It has some shaved Parmesan on it and some homemade looking croutons. is delicious. Every single element in that salad, air, water, fire, I was kidding, croutons, lettuce, dressing, cheese, feels like high quality. The Parmesan cheese is so sharp. You can tell it's been aged for 200 years. The shreds are nice and thick. So your teeth can really sink into each tangy little piece of cheese. You know, the croutons are like for sure house made. They're so buttery and so crunchy and they taste freshly baked. The Caesar dressing is fantastic. It does taste like high-end Caesar, so it does have that slight anchovy flavor, but I don't mind it when it comes to Caesar salad because I just love Caesar salad so much, right? Also, like, we're in Disney. Something has to be aerial themed It just so happens to be the salad dressing. But I do have one issue with the salad. It's a teeny tiny bit dry. If they had put just a few more little drizzles of Caesar dressing, it would be an absolute 10 out of 10. But because it is dry, I'm gonna have to give it an 8 out of 10. Otherwise, it's perfection. Delicious. Let's try the smashed potatoes. Oh! Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't stop. Get out of the way. I just ate all the smashed potatoes in like a minute. <laughs> those are some of the best mashed potatoes I've ever had. I'm not exaggerating. The amount of flavor in those potatoes is ridiculous. They truly taste so extremely buttery. They taste cheesy, like you can taste the sharpness of the cheese. There's also a very strong garlic flavor. Like they went in with the seasonings, girl. And the texture, guys, they're just so silky. Those are truly incredible. I'm giving the smashed potatoes a 10 out of 10. Perfection. Um, I forgot to try the smashed potatoes with the bacon vinaigrette. Oops, but we can try it with the chicken. So let's get into this pollo. It seems to be boneless, at least that part definitely was. This is what it looks like on the inside. Focus. Focus. Gorgeous. Oh, it smells amazing. Let's try it. Oh my God. Oh. 
Oh, there's two pieces. Wow, good for me. <laughs> Let me try it with this bacon vinaigrette. Oh my god. What on earth? I can't. I can't. <laughs> I've never had anything like this. This is the most unique fried chicken I've had in my 29 years on this planet of Earth. The flavor literally shocked me. Zap! First of all, the chicken on the inside is just the highest quality chicken filet. Perfectly cooked, 100% juiciness, and the chicken on the inside tastes salty. Probably because it's been marinated. It just, it tastes salty all the way through. The breading is thick, yet not rocky. It's so extremely crispy. It is not greasy whatsoever. The flavor is what set me on a new course in my destiny. This is gonna sound weird, but it tastes like a flaming hot Cheeto. <laughs> not me comparing a five-star resort room service chicken to a flaming hot Cheeto, but it really does taste like a flaming hot Cheeto without the spice. It has that same tang, and I don't know if that tang comes from the buttermilk, but it's really tangy. It doesn't make sense in my brain, but to my taste buds, it was one of the best experiences they've ever had. And as a mother, I just want my taste buds to make memories they can cherish forever. This is a moment. I think it's obvious I'm giving this fried chicken a 10 out of 10. It might be the best room service meal I've had in my life. Also, the bacon vinaigrette is fantastic. It tastes like a vinaigrette with a very strong bacon flavor. <laughs> it is very sour, so I don't know if I would enjoy it with my whole meal, but dipping a couple bites of my chicken into it was an enjoyable experience. Also, none of this needed salt or pepper, I'm just saying. Let's quickly try the roll. It's very hard. I feel like a DJ. I'm just gonna rip it, I don't care. Ooh, this is very soft butter. That's a lot, <laughs> sorry. Mmm. Mm. That's that rich people butter. <laughs> That butter said Walmart. I don't know her. I have to say the roll is very basic. You could find this roll at any typical restaurant. It's just simple, kind of dry. Tastes kind of like sourdough, but it's not. It's fine, but the butter is perfection. The butter is a 10 out of 10. It is so creamy and it's so salty. It's like Cheesecake Factory's butter, but lighter, airier, creamier. I'm gonna give the bread and butter an eight out of 10. If the bread tasted more like special and like unique, it would have been a 10. Okay, girlies, I'm gonna save the rest of this for later in my clear fridge. It is now time for dessert. Let's see it. Oh, oh, wow, do you see this? This is giving Avatar alien snack, right? It's very that. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. I love how it looks. Is that a Maria cookie underneath? I think it is. <laughs> Look at this class, elegance, opulence. There's a flower on here. Can I eat it? I'm sorry, <laughs> I might be fancy now, but I still don't want to eat a tulip. Okay, let's, oh, oh, that is so satisfying. <gasps> oh my God, the texture. <laughs> As you can see, there's the mousse, there's the Maria cookie, there's some sort of jelly right there, and then there's the chocolate layer. I'm salivating, oh my God, let's try this. I don't like this gooey thing on the Maria cookie. We don't know her, get out of here. This by itself though, mm. come on Maria. How do you solve a problem like her? The strawberries, oh, with the chocolate. It is nice. Nice, nice, nice. It looks how it tastes, if that makes sense. The Maria cookie is a little soggy in a good way. It has that kind of cakey texture now. The weird gooey layer that's on top of it is not it for me. Have you ever had like those like healthy fruit leather things? It's like a healthy fruit roll up, but it's just like, like dehydrated fruit. It tastes just like that. And it's a very overpowering flavor. That flavor doesn't serve luxury. It serves like, ugh. I'm trying to be healthier. <laughs> and that's not the vibe that I'm going for today. I'm going for magic. The strawberry mousse itself is nice. It's good. It's very light in texture and in flavor. Um, I think it may be a little too light in flavor. I think it should have just a bit more sweetness, a bit more strawberryness. It just tastes a little too airy, a little too oxygeny. But I do adore the texture. I think it's 
it's, it's a very fun little dish to eat. The strawberry pieces on the side taste fantastic and fresh, and they go so well with this dark chocolate little disc. Very nice combo. So it's not perfect. It is good. Would I get it again? Probably not. So I'm gonna have to give it a nice six out of 10. Overall, I'm still so impressed with this meal because that fried chicken, like I said, is actually life-changing. I am still shocked by it. And if I ever stay here again, I am getting that again, 100%. And if you stay here, you have to get it. You okay? The doors are very thin. So I guess everyone's been hearing my whole mukbang. <laughs> I'm gonna relax for a bit. The Magic Kingdom fireworks show starts at 8.45. I'm gonna go outside and we're gonna watch the fireworks together. I'm so excited. This is what the resort looks like at nighttime. Gorgeous. All the lights glowing on the water. The moon is glistening. And there's tons of people waiting for the fireworks show. As am I. The resort is resorting. The lights are twinkling. The Mickey is a rat. By the way, guys, the shower is amazing. I changed into my Mickey shirt, and I have to say, I think this is my favorite Disney resort so far. Not because it's bougie, not because it's the most expensive, but because it is the most chill. And I feel like with like a lot of the other resorts, people just like use it like any old hotel and then they leave it in, in the daytime and they go to Disney. But at this resort, it feels like people really enjoy it as its own resort, if that makes sense. It's amazing. Poo, pow. Poo. <laughs> poo poo. Poo poo. <laughs> This is a backwards firework. It's getting stuck back in. This is the grand finale sped up. Guys, I can't make that many noises all at once. I don't think it's possible. It would probably hurt me. So I'm just gonna let you watch this. Isn't it pretty? Wasn't that wonderful? Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> okay, chill. The fireworks were magical. I love this resort. I really do. It feels magical here, even more than the other resorts. Guys, I look insane. Look at the bags under my eyes. Let's review the bed. The mattress was great, very comfy. The sheets, very comfy, crisp. And I don't wanna complain, but the pillows are not it. They're extremely mushy, too mushy. One of them is just too flat, like your head sinks to the bottom of the pillow. Two of them, it's just too much volume and just too much mushiness around your head. So either way, it's not that comfy. So I don't like the pillows. Maybe it's because I'm not used to authentic feathers, but I'm still very grateful to be here. I'm gonna get up and order breakfast. Oh my God, the sun. <laughs> it's better. Okay, I feel like a prince. Let's open the breakfast menu. Okay, so there's breakfast appetizers, including Floridian style eggs benedict, Cobb salad, oh, part of a complete breakfast, oatmeal, yogurt, fruit bowl, soup, avocado toast, and shrimp cocktail. Mm, I think I'm gonna skip all that and get two entrees because the entrees look better. They have steak and eggs. By the way, all the entrees come with cheesy hash brown casserole. The grand breakfast, which is your typical eggs, meat, potato, traditional eggs benedict, seasonal buttermilk pancakes, cinnamon french toast, Mickey shaped waffle. So I think I'm gonna keep it simple and get the grand breakfast, the eggs, bacon, sausage, and hash brown. And I'm also gonna get the cinnamon french toast, which comes with the dose de leche creme. The french toast meal is $21 and the grand breakfast is $24. Typical. Breakfast sounds amazing. I'm gonna go order it. I just realized I haven't gone out on the patio yet, guys. Whoa. Oh, what a lovely morning here in London town. Is that Mary? Mary, get down from there. It actually kind of smells like pancakes. I love it. We've had the best day. Look at us. <laughs> Look where we are. Okay, breakfast is served. The bacon smells so potent. The pig said, this is my time and you're gonna smell it. Smells 
So first things first, we have the syrup. Oh, smells like an oak. Then we have some premium ketchup and we also have some jams. And then we have two big globs of butter. And I think this is the dolce de leche for the French toast. Look at this guys, look at this. That <laughs> looks so thick and so delicious. Let's see what this first plate is. Oh, very cute. Everything is in its own little blob. Look, <laughs> do you see what I mean? We have a blob of hash browns, a blob of scrambled chicken, a biscuit, and then the meats. And so this must be the French toast. I'm gonna set this aside. Let's first try the biscuit. Ooh, this looks fluffy. Mmm. <laughs> so warm. Mmm. Oh, I need some water. That's a perfect classic little biscuit. It has the texture of a Red Lobster Cheddar Bay biscuit without the cheese. So it's more cakey than biscuity, which I personally love. The flavor is so buttery and it's salty, but it still has that classic biscuit aftertaste, right? Let me try it with a butter blob. Isn't that a brand of turkey? <laughs> no, butter ball. <laughs> okay. There's some butter. Mmm. Mm-hmm. The biscuit's gone. The butter made the biscuit moister, even saltier. Fantastic. I'm gonna give the biscuit a nine out of 10. Very strong. Now it's time for the bacon. Mm-hmm. Mm Classic. That is, I just like growled. What was that? Did you hear that? That is classic, fantastic bacon. Is it better than your typical bacon? No but it's just as delicious as your typical bacon. Does that make sense? <laughs> it is more on the thin cut side, which um, some people prefer thick cut bacon. I personally love both. It's salty, tastes like any old good bacon. There is really nothing more to say. I enjoy it. I'm giving it a nice strong seven out of 10. Now let's try this cube of scrambled eggs. That's the first item in the past 24 hours that has needed salt. Come on, tiny shaker. Mmm, oh, much better, wow. The salt really brought out all the flavors. Mmm. And they're gone. Truly, the salt said, you need a hero? I can be that man for you. The first bite was extremely mediocre, I was like, there's no flavor here, there's nothing happening, but the salt really revealed the butteriness that was within these eggs. They have that classic fancy scrambled eggs flavor profile once you add salt. I have to say they were a little bit rubbery and a little bit overcooked. Did that ruin my experience? No, but the magic is leaving because I'm about to check out. But the texture was a little distracting. They just weren't as decadent as they could have been, but they weren't bad at all. I'm gonna give the eggs a nice six out of 10. That's fair. Now it's time to try the sausage. noticed that every time I get pork sausage from a fancy hotel, I typically don't love it. And that's typically because of the texture. Pork sausage texture is a little grainy, a little cartilagey, a little nosy. But with this particular pork sausage, the texture isn't the issue. Like it's a little bit grainy, but it's not a big deal. Like it's, it's, it's fine. The flavor's the issue here. And it tastes like a mixture of Spam and Vienna sausage. And, <laughs> oh God, I, did not expect a canned meat flavor to be on my room service plate. It isn't disgusting. Like I could eat it if someone made it for me and they were like, please eat this. I worked so hard on this sausage. But because I have no one to please, I can be totally honest. I don't like it. So I'm gonna have to give the sausage a two out of 10. I'm sorry. I saved the most exciting item for last. The cheesy hash brown casserole ball, okay? That's how it looks on the inside. Focus, please, please.
That's absolute perfection. It rivals Cracker Barrel's hash brown casserole, which is the biggest compliment I could give any Idahoan potato. The texture was a little drier than your typical hash brown, you know, like casserole, which actually turned out to be a good thing. It made it feel more cake-like and more special. It just, it made it feel more hearty. It had a very creamy cheese flavor, almost like, honestly, cream cheese, cream cheese vibes. There might've been cream cheese in there. Very satisfying to eat because it's it's like a little personal portion sized cake type thing. Fabulous, incredible, legendary. Okay, it is now time for the French toast, which did come with extra bacon. Oh! The pieces of bread aren't huge. They look like baguette slices. Come on, Belle. But they look delicious. Look how golden brown they are. They have almost like crystallized <laughs> Sorry. Toasty surfaces. Oh my gosh, there's a little bit of fruit. The bacon. Ooh, these look even crispier. Huh. Let's add some of this. The shit delicious. Come on. More, more, more. Come on, blob. And let's add a little drizzle. Oh, oh. I don't like that much syrup. I like to keep it a little, a little savory, you know? Ooh. Oh, very fluffy texture. Gosh, that French toast attacked me. I don't know where it went, but it escaped. Dare I say it again? That is the best French toast this man has ever had. The inside of the bread was super fluffy, not soggy. It did not have that nasty French toast like egginess. And then the outside honestly tasted like a big churro. It was all coated and crystallized in sugar crystals and cinnamon fibers. And the sugar truly added like such a satisfying crunch that went so well with the fluffy bread. And then the fruit added a uh, freshness and the Dolce de Leche added a very authentic salt to caramel flavor. It didn't taste like caramel syrup, you know, it was like real. Thick, goopy caramel, Gwyneth Paltrow caramel. And when all those flavors came together, it truly gave me the same experience as the fried chicken. Life-changing, life-altering. I am so impressed. If you couldn't tell the French toast was a 10 out of 10, if I could give it an 100 out of 10, I would, but I have to follow my own man-made rules. I'm gonna organize this tray, pack my things, and sadly check out. I truly have had the best time here. The food has been mostly amazing. The room was amazing. And I know that it's pricey. No room is worth almost a thousand dollars. But if it's gonna be almost a thousand dollars, I'm just glad it's actually good. You know, I am so grateful for this experience. Hit that thumbs up button. Okay, <laughs> don't forget that. Also comment, subscribe if you're new here. Goodbye Floridian. You were grand. Like a Pillsbury biscuit. Bye guys, love you. <laughs> Saturday game.